Let's have a look at bookkeeping to trial balance module two. That's all about value added tax. Now you will not get a many questions in tests, assignments and exam on value added tax as theory questions per se, but you must know this off by heart because you will apply this VAT calculations when you're working with journals, when you're working with your ledgers and things like that. So you're always going to apply it and therefore it is important that you know it very well. So let's have a look. Okay, we need to understand what a VAT vendor is. A VAT vendor is somebody that collects VAT on behalf of SARS, really any business. And uh, when you collect that VAT, there is an output put VAT payable to SARS and that is a liability. But if you buy something as a VAT vendor, you can claim back the VAT that you pay to suppliers and that will be recorded as an input VAT and input VAT is an asset. Remember that VAT can only be claimed on products and services used by the company that is required by the business. If it's not business related, you cannot claim it. For most vendors, the VAT is due when the invoice is raised. And for our purposes, we're doing these ICB uh, calculations when we will assume that uh, the VAT is due the moment the invoice is raised. Some regulations that apply to VAT, if the turnover is between uh, 50,000 and 1 million, then it is a voluntary whether you want to register for VAT or not. If your turnover is between 1 million and 50 million, your VAT is due every two months. And when, if it is more than 50 million, then um, it is due monthly. Sole traders and partnership can apply to pay VAT on the payment basis uh, on the provision that the turnover must be less than 2.5 million. We get VAT categories. So standard rate supplies is just 15%. You know that you pay 15% VAT on basically everything. Then there's some a thing like zero rated supplies where you, it's still a VAT category. So technically you are paying VAT, but it happens to be zero, so you're not paying. Then we get exempt supplies, not allowable items, and things that's really just not a product or a service. So you cannot claim VAT on these. I'll explain that a little bit more detail here. Okay, so standard is everything that is not listed underneath. So most things are just standard. Now, when we have a look at things that are zero rated, uh, fuel, like petrol, diesel, and paraffin, that's zero rated. Staple foods like brown bread, milk, fruit, veg, and maize, that is zero rated. Exported goods is zero rated. That's important to remember. The sale of a business as a going concern is zero rated, and welfare services is zero rated. And then uh, every year, the uh, people at SARS and the people at Treasury, they review this and they can add things to the zero rated category or take them away. And one of the most recent additions that we have seen been added to the zero rated category is sanitary pads and tampons. Certain things are exempt from VAT. That would be life insurance. All interest is exempt from VAT. Private rent, not business rent, business rent is just standard, but private rent is exempt. Bus, train, and taxi transport is exempt, but uh, if you want to travel by plane, that's not exempt. Educational services is exempt from VAT. Donations is exempt from VAT. And all sales by non-profit organizations are exempt from VAT. Certain things are just not allowed, so you will pay VAT on it, but you are not allowed to claim back the VAT for business purposes. That would include entertainment expenditure, passenger vehicles, club fees, and subscription, and anything that is not a product or service. Just a, a note there on club fees and subscriptions. If it is the gym, then those fees will not be allowed. You won't be allowed to claim back the VAT on your gym membership. But if you is a membership that is required for you to do business, 
you are uh, a doctor and you need to register with uh, some oversight body, then of course you will be able to claim that VAT back from SARS. There I've listed for you 19 zero rated foodstuffs, um, things like rice, vegetables, fruit, vegetable oil, milk, cultured milk, brown wheaten meal, um, eggs, edible legumes and pulses of leguminous plants. Goodness, you wonder what that is. I'm talking about peas and uh, beans and things like that. Brown bread, maize meal, samp, mealy rice, dried mealies, dried beans, lentils, lentils, pulchets, or sardina in a tins, but not tuna, <laughs> milk powder and dairy powder blend. Uh, just um, in case they tell you that you bought any of these out of petty cash, then you will remember that it is zero rated. Good. We get two bases of VAT. The one is the payment basis and the other one is the invoice basis. I already said to you that for our purposes, we are just going to assume that everything is invoice based. So the moment a credit sale is made to a debtor, the business must record the VAT as owing from the time of sale. But the payment cash basis is also possible. That is when a credit sales is made to a debtor, then the business need only record the VAT once the money is received, only applies to sole traders and partnerships if their turnover is less than two and a half million a year, or if it is an association not for gain, and also local authorities. Local authorities, they will collect the VAT, but they will only um, pay it over to SARS um, once they receive it. Else they would have a big problem with people not paying the electricity rates now. Okay. Source documents. Now, when we refer to a source document, it just means that we need a document that we uh, can actually give to SARS if they uh, are asking for to if they do an audit. So the general rule is that the buyer gets the original document while the seller keeps the duplicate. Okay, so what is used for input VAT? So that is purchases. When we purchase something, we get an original tax invoice or a duplicate credit note. Okay, if somebody um, brings anything back to us, we give them the original credit note and we keep the duplicate or an original cash slip. So if you uh, are audited, you'll need to produce that original tax invoice or the original cash slip to SARS. Uh, what's used for output VAT, if we make sales, then the duplicate tax invoice apply or the original credit note. If we take things back and uh, they give us our money back, then we get the original credit note or the duplicate cash slips. But those are not the only source documents. We also get something like cash receipts. It is given when a debtor and creditor make payment. Okay, So there's no VAT on cash receipts because the VAT was already accounted for when the invoice was generated. Now you receive a payment, so that would be typically one of those categories where you would say this is not a product or service. It's just a payment received on sales made previously and uh, for which you have already claimed the VAT or paid the VAT. EFT payments is only reflected when it uh, recorded when it reflects on the bank statement. Now you might get a notification uh, when somebody makes an EFT payment into your account and maybe it's not set up or maybe um, it doesn't go to the functionary responsible for the recording. And therefore, we only record it when it is reflected on our bank statement. The check counterfoil shows that you made a payment. Okay, Check payment is like cash payment, very seldom used these days. Uh, many people don't accept cash as payment anymore. And But for the purposes of... Uh, the scores, we are still going to have a look at the check and the check counterfoil. Then you have the petty cash voucher. That is an internal source document. It's really a permission slip. So it's a voucher that you generate when um, you give money to somebody to quickly run to the shops and buy something. Uh, and then 
before you give them the money, you generate the petty cash voucher. And then one day, once they come back with a, a cash slip, the original cash slip, you will just attach that to the petty cash voucher. And then we have journal vouchers. Those are generated internally to enable us to post things to the general ledger. Now, I've alleged a general journal. My apologies. And I've asked you there, what about credit cards? Now, a credit card, to explain to you, is really a small loan that we make at the bank every time we use the credit card. It's got nothing to do with the vendor from which we buy. So for the purposes of uh, our bookkeeping, credit card is uh, regarded as cash. It's a separate arrangement between you and your bank, though. Okay. Let's have a look at the VAT calculations because in your assignment one and in your test one, you will be required to do the VAT calculations. So if you have the VAT inclusive price or you want to, um, rather if you want to calculate the VAT inclusive price, you will take the VAT exclusive price and you will multiply it by 1.15. Why 0.15? Well, it's 15%. Okay, and it's an additional 15%, so therefore 1.15. If you want to calculate the VAT exclusive amount and you have the VAT inclusive amount, you will divide by 1.15. Okay. If you are trying to calculate the VAT inclusive amount and you only have the VAT amount, you will take that fat amount, you will multiply it with 115, and then you will divide it by 15. If you want to calculate the VAT payable, you um, or the VAT on its own, you will simply say the VAT inclusive price minus the VAT exclusive price gives me the VAT. It's the difference between the two. Okay. Now, what's important, you always calculate the markup on the VAT exclusive price. I can't stress that enough. You are not calculating your markup on the VAT inclusive. Okay, so you take, uh, you always work on the VAT exclusive price. And there are two ways in which we can calculate the markup. So firstly, let's have a look at markup on cost. Well, then you start with a cost price. Remember that is a VAT exclusive. So there we have the cost price is 250 and we have a markup policy of 50 percent what we then do is we multiply that cost price with the markup percentage so 250 rand times 50 percent is obviously going to give us 125 rand and then we add the two and we say 250 plus 125 we are going to sell it we've bought it for 250, we are going to sell it at 375 Rand, excluding the VAT. Okay. The short way, of course, to do it, um, if our markup is 50%, we will just multiply it with 1.5 and get to the same answer. If our markup is 40%, we'll multiply it with 1.4 and so forth. For the same reason, same uh, reasoning that we used when we did the VAT calculation. Then there's another concept that they give us, which is the markup on sales. And what this really means is that the gross profit is included. Okay, So we start with the sales price, VAT exclusive again. Okay, so the sales price, and now I've started with that sales price that we had in the previous example to show you how much they differ. So in this case, the sales price is 375 and the markup is 50%. Okay, so what do we do? We deduct the gross profit from one. So if it's 50%, our markup on, it means that 50% of our selling price is our gross profit. So really half of it is profit and half of it is um, what we paid for it. And in this case, we multiply the two and we see that our um, uh, cost price really was 187 rand 50 cent. Okay, so you see it's completely different when we have a look at the two. In the one case, you start with a cost price and in the other case, you start with a selling price. Don't get confused. 
um, when we actually start doing those calculations, I will show you how it is done. Okay, thank you guys. That is all. Uh, and uh, let me just uh, stop the recording. Thank you.